Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com and today we've got a uh, pair of Lindrums here. Uh, two different customers, uh, both purchased uh, Lindrums on eBay and, uh, and have them here uh, with me for service and uh, we'll open them up. One of them got lucky with their eBay buy and one of them did not. So uh, this is the one, uh, this is the one where they got lucky and I'll open it up and we'll We'll have a look inside. So this Lin is actually working and um, it has MIDI and uh, inside it looks pretty clean and the only thing uh, the uh, customer noted was the batteries were dead and uh, you can see here uh, they've, they're corroded and uh, the volume, master volume pot was scratchy. So uh, for this one we're going to be uh, cleaning the pots and sliders and we're going to be uh, changing the batteries um, and then that's pretty much it and here the second Lindrum is a uh, is a total nightmare inside so the, it has the same or similar MIDI adapter and it has uh, an extra board uh, it has wires uh, soldered everywhere uh, capacitors cut with wire soldered to them in the air and uh, it has a bunch of, uh, I guess the battery board also corroded uh, beyond the point that the uh, customer thought it would be repairable. So we're going to be putting in a replacement for that. Uh, but the board, and it's, it's, you're not going to be able to see it here, he sent me some pictures, but um, these uh, regulators and, and diodes uh, gave off so much heat the board is blackened on the bottom. Um, and, uh, and basically this, this Lindrum doesn't work. So uh, we're going to be rebuilding the power supply of this, installing a new um, uh, battery backup board. And uh, if, uh, if it's throwing off that much heat, then there's, there's probably a short circuit somewhere. So we're going to be tracking that down. And uh, uh, the, first, the, the first goal is to get the thing to power on without burning anything up. And uh, from there, we'll we'll work on getting it actually working. Um, but this one, this one's going to be a challenge. So uh, this this uh, it's uh, not impossible, but it's uh, it's uh, pretty ugly looking. So uh, we're going to get started with the easier one first. So uh, besides the dead battery, uh, the only real problem with this is the scratchy volume knob. You can hear it there. Uh, this threw me for a loop for a second, I opened it up and I saw that uh, the collapse ROM has been replaced with a, a second uh, cowbell, um, but uh, it seems to be working well. So um, we're going to unplug it and uh, start with the battery board. Here's that board removed and uh, you can see the battery leakage here on the, uh, the top side of the board and uh, it doesn't look too terrible there, however when you turn it over you can see that the uh, the battery corrosion has uh, damaged, um, has spread up, up this far from uh, from down here. So we're going to clean this all up. We're going to cut the old batteries off, clean this up as best as we can with vinegar, and uh, then we're going to install an uh, external battery holder, um, so uh, the uh, customer can uh, change the batteries himself in the future. You don't need to have them soldered onto the board <clears throat> like that um, when they can just go in a nice little little Dell Lay battery holder. So uh, I'm going to remove this and uh, clean up the board. Here's the 5 volt board and what I did is I installed a, a battery holder and I soldered the wires to the bottom um, after I cleaned up the, uh, the traces underneath um, from the uh, corrosion from the old batteries and I put in some nickel metal hydride batteries uh, which are less likely to leak than the NICADs that were there before and uh, now I'm letting them charge up and um, then we'll move on to cleaning the pots and, and that'll be it. So uh, I uh, let the batteries charge up so I can test uh, the memory retention and uh, while I was uh, doing that I <coughs> cleaned the uh, pots so uh, no more scratchiness there and once I started doing that to all the pots and sliders, it, it made a real difference. They were they worked, but they were really really gummed up, and now they move uh, freely. 
and smoothly. Uh, so let's test the uh, memory retention now. So there's no pattern here on pattern 11. So uh, let's let's record one. Don't quit my daytime job, but uh, so we play that, and it's there. So now I'll turn off the drum machine. So it's off. Turn it back on, and and it works. So uh, I'll let the batteries charge a little more to make sure they're nice and topped off and uh, then this Lindrum is done and ready to go home to its owner. Now we're moving on to the uh, seemingly impossible uh, second Lindrum. It's, uh, it's a mess of uh, wires and modifications and uh, let's take a look at what we've got. So there's this MIDI board um, and it uh, goes to the MIDI jacks here and also is uh, soldered to various points on the CPU board and then uh, there's a, another daughter board here which is uh, soldered to random points on the, on the circuit board here we have uh, things soldered up in the air resistors piggybacked on top of each other uh, in general not a fun time ahead. But what I did notice <coughs> in here, uh, you know, starting at the beginning, the power supply should be able to at least power this up and get the uh, 15 volt rail uh, stable. But uh, I noticed these uh, these bridge diodes here seem uh, uh, a little crispy and then also someone replaced the 1N4000 series uh, bridge diodes with a 1N4148 uh, that kind of orange diode, uh, that's the first and the third one uh, those are not acceptable diodes to use for bridge rectifiers, those are small signal diodes not, not, um, not power diodes uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start by um, replacing these diodes. We're going to rebuild this, this power supply. The, the customer sent the, uh, the parts, the capacitors, and the voltage regulators, and uh, I'm not sure he sent the right diodes, but uh, I have them. Um, so we're going we're gonna to pull this board out, and we're going to start changing those parts, and uh, see if we can get the 15 and minus 15 volt rail stable before we connect the 5 volt supply. What a mess. Uh, this is the underside of the board, <clears throat> and you can see that, uh, that it took so much heat. Th those are the, uh, the little diodes that I was showing you earlier. These are the big diodes for the 5 volt rail. This is the, the bottom side of the board for, of those. And then the, uh, the voltage regulators here. And this took so much heat that it burned through the board on all, basically all the power rails. So, uh, uh, we might have a, a long road ahead of us to get this resolved since it looks like uh, uh, there's there's a big current draw throughout. Also that MIDI adapter mess uh, is creating another problem. I can't disconnect this board because it's soldered to uh, to everything else. So I have to work on it like this which is uh, going to be a challenge. Here we have a nice close shot of the diodes, and you can see that the uh, the second diode from the left. Let me see if I can get my finger there. Yeah, my finger's too big, but this second one, the one between the two orange ones, you can see it's cracked right down the middle. So uh, we are going to uh, <coughs> be uh, changing all these components and then try to get this rail stable. So here's the uh, the board with the uh, components removed. Uh, <coughs> the heat. Uh, actually lifted a, a trace here between the uh, wound up coming up with the capacitor uh, between a voltage regulator and the uh, capacitor so we're gonna have to be mindful when we put that back and then uh, <clears throat> here's the fuse and uh, it says half amp and this fuse looks awfully beefy for half amp and uh, I don't know if you can see but uh, I can and uh, stamped right there 
it says 7 amps. So when you replace a fuse, you have to replace it with the, the same kind, or the, the kind that's marked on the instrument. So basically, uh, there was a short circuit here, and uh, by defeating the fuse protection, uh, by putting in a larger fuse, and the fuse blew, it blew for a reason, so you don't go put a larger fuse in, because then you're going to burn your stuff up, like this. So um, we are going to change this to a half amp fuse. We're going to try to clean this up as best as we can and, uh, and then replace everything being mindful of the damaged pads. Power supply components on this board, so the uh, electrolytic capacitors have been replaced. The uh, bridge diodes for the 15 and minus 15 volt rail have been replaced with a uh, non-cracked apart um, uh, 1N4000 series diodes rather than small signal diodes that were there. The uh, voltage regulators have been replaced, and uh, these uh, larger, beefier diodes for the 5 volt rail bridge have uh, been replaced. So basically, the, the, pretty much the entire power supply here has been replaced. And then I installed the uh, aftermarket power supply board uh, that the customer picked up, and uh, I changed the, uh, the fuse from the 7 amp slow blow the half amp slow blow which should be there and uh, I, I'm able to turn it on and nothing goes up in smoke the 15 volt rail and the minus 15 volt rail are stable the uh, 5 volt memory uh, rail is uh, stable but the uh, 5 volt the main 5 volt rail is uh, is being pulled down to ground and I'm trying to isolate it um, but because this normally to uh, to isolate it from the uh, CPU board, you would disconnect this. But there's some uh, some wires coming down here, soldered onto this board and piggybacked onto this connector. So <clears throat> I'm going to start slowly peeling off these uh, modifications and in, an, in an effort to track down that. So I removed the uh, the wires that were uh, connecting that were just soldered here onto the tip of the Molex or the back of the Molex connector and down here and up here and uh, still no luck but I'm looking in here and I see that the uh, the contacts some of them have uh, have lost their tension you can see counting from uh, left to right you can see uh, number one uh, four and five uh, you can see hopefully you can see um, they, they may not be making contact with the post there. So um, I'm going to take these, uh, these out and recrimp them and put them back in the housing. And by, by recrimp them, I mean uh, replace the, uh, the contacts in there. So crimp new contacts on and throw the old ones away. So here are those connectors. And you can see they're totally corroded. And uh, this one, which was the 5 volt rail, is... Uh, it's just uh, just totally black in there. In fact, the uh, housing on the back side, you can see that that, I guess when there was a short going on, uh, it generated so much heat that it, uh, because someone changed the fuse, it, uh, that it actually scorched this uh, housing. This is uh, burn from where someone tack soldered uh, a wire here to this brown connector. So we're going to just cut these. You can see there's like battery corrosion and uh, this one's the blackened one. We're just going to cut those off, strip a little bit of the clean wire and crimp new terminals on and then we'll, uh, the housing is okay so we'll just put it back in the same housing and uh, We'll see. Maybe there wasn't a short. Maybe that was just not making contact. And so we'll see. These are the old uh, connectors. You can see they got the battery corrosion on them. They've got this one's burned up a little bit, and uh, and then some of them lost their tension and weren't making contact. So um, I put the the new the new contacts in, and I'm ready to fire this up. So here we go, and it actually turns on. 
and uh, it shows pattern 11 and uh, let's get everything all centered here and uh, let's try stuff out so kabasa doesn't work I'm sorry hi-hat doesn't work uh, high and mid toms are working Very quietly, I hear something there. Side stick isn't really working. Snare is working. Bass drum isn't working. I kind of hear crash. Let's see if, uh, very quietly, I hear crash. Let's try some of the percussion sounds. No cabasa, no tambourine. Uh, that's not the right sound. No cowbell and no claps, but uh, got the thing stable and uh, and making a couple of sounds so uh, we've made some improvement here I think some of these the sliders just made dirty like uh, this one wasn't working before conga high and uh, by fiddling with the slider a little I, I got sound out of it now uh, but this still does need a going through and uh, see what's uh, what's working and, and, and really not working I do see some foreign objects down in the sliders. So we can see on the toms low towards the bottom there's something. And there you can see on side stick towards maybe three quarters of the way down there's something in there. Here are some pretty gross sliders. The reason that I have this uh, board folded back uh, is the two, two sliders that I have in the down position are the ones that I noticed the little bits of metal inside of and I fear that it's the wipers from the sliders. So I'm going to remove those sliders and open them up and have a look. So uh, I opened up one of the uh, two pots that I removed that I saw the, uh, the debris in. And uh, it's not debris, it's the, it is the wiper of the, uh, the slider. So normally that's mounted here on that plastic thing. And the little nubs that it, it pushes into are, are broken off and, uh, and this pot is going to need to be replaced. So uh, I know at least two uh, have the wipers broken off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here to the board and I'm going to test uh, continuity between the pins of the, uh, the sliders and find out if there's any others that have their wipers snapped off. So I went through the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the sliders and pots and made sure that there was at least some degree of continuity between the, the terminals of the sliders and uh, and pots so that there weren't any open circuits because that was the case for these two because the wipers had detached there was open circuit between some of the terminals of the slider and uh, it's just these two um, but this explains why uh, side stick and uh, low toms isn't working so seven of the voices uh, work right now seven of the sounds work and uh, we just found an explanation for for two more uh, so that leaves 14 to figure out. So what I found is uh, some of the, uh, the, the sounds like hi-hat and uh, ride and um, crash were very soft. They weren't, they were there, but they were very soft. So let me turn this on real quick and turn the volume up and uh, you can hear the crash. It's just much softer than this. And uh, so uh, Hi-Hat was another one of these ones that was very soft. And uh, what I wound up doing was uh, where these uh, capacitors are uh, clipped and uh, kind of bypassed off to this part of the uh, MIDI adapter, um, I, I removed that and I soldered it back to where it should be in the circuit, and that restored that, that voice. This is uh, uh, sitting right at the end of the final op amp, right before the output jack. Uh, so it was 
routing the audio signal up here and uh, just coming back much, much weaker. So uh, this thing, as it stands, uh, has wires that are uh, disconnected and who knows where they go. So uh, I think I figured out how to, to fix quite a number of the voices. So I'm going to go and remove the, this, um, uh, these uh, bypassed capacitors um, for all the uh, other, other ones and we'll see how much closer that brings us to getting this fixed. So uh, ripping those, uh, those uh, jumper wires out from here and soldering the capacitors back down has, uh, has made some improvement. So we don't have, oh yeah, we have kibasa right here. Uh, we had tambourine a second ago. There we go. So we have tambourine, conga, cowbell, claps. Uh, I'll take it off percussion. We have hi-hat. Toms, we have uh, high and mid. Low, we know we don't have because we need to uh, repair or replace the slider. We have ride. Side stick, we don't have because we know we need to replace the slider. We have snare. Bass. And uh, crack. It sounds like the little uh, after effect there, uh, but we've we've made huge progress in uh, in bringing the uh, the sounds back to this. So, in an effort to try to salvage these uh, these two sliders with the wipers that are broken off, I. Uh, open them up and I'm, uh, I clean them out and that's just the mess from the two two sliders with the wipers broken off and I'm going to try to uh, reattach the wiper uh, with some kind of adhesive. So uh, believe it or not the uh, repair that I made to the uh, side stick and the uh, low toms slider actually held. So now we have side stick and and we have all three toms. So uh, we've been successful at uh, bringing back all of the 23 different drum sounds that the machine makes. And now I'll go on to test the um, pattern recording and, and song editing. And um, uh, we're very, very close to having this done. So I'm able to record um, patterns and I'm able to record songs. Um, here's... <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not very musical, but um, the only thing I really notice is that one of the uh, segments of the display, the, uh, the lower digit of the uh, song display, is out. So I'm going to take a look at that real quick. And apparently, just my touch is magical enough to bring the segment back to the uh, missing display. Um, I was probing around with the oscilloscope, and it came back. So there's probably some kind of cracked solder joint. Uh, in the area that I was uh, touching, so I'm going to just reflow those, and uh, then this Lindrum is good to go. Uh, these kinds of repairs where I get to bring back a piece of uh, gear that looked hopeless, um, to me, are the most satisfying. Because um, it's not about the money. I mean, first of all, there's not a lot of money to be made doing this. And uh, even so, I'd make more at my day job. But to me, it's really rewarding to bring these old instruments back to life. Uh, like this one that would normally be a parts unit or, or, or garbage. And, and that's why I do synth repairs and make the kits that I have on my website and make these videos to help you fix your own stuff. So if you've got a hopeless piece of gear sitting around that you can't fix like this Lin drum, let me fix it or, or let me buy it from you so it has a new chance at life. This is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.